welcome welcome to the bca 6th semester session number 39 welcome my dear students in this session we will learn about what is shell we will keep on telling like shell shell is nothing but like command interpreter line so it is taking it will accepts the commands and everything so today we will learn the detail of our shell how this shell has been uh, there are types of shells and also like how this interactive cycles is going on how this will help us to execute these commands and all we will look in this session so before that we will have a small recap like ERE that is our extended regular expression we just now learned in our previous session where we also learned the operators along with that if we mention the plus and question mark symbols and all we found that there are many like uh, instances will be a different but the same grep command will work in a different forms so we just saw all those things we learned and then we are moving on to our today's session that is the shell so before uh, uh, explaining this i just want to tell you see here we all know that our computer will understand a particular language like zeros and ones which is called binary language in early days of computing if you remember instructions are provided using a binary language which is difficult for all of us that we have already discussed in our first semester isn't it so in order to read and write if at all we starts to give the binary level languages means it will be too tedious to remember all those zeros and ones combination so in operating system there is a special program which will help us to convert these high level languages into a machine level language so that whatever we give it like in alphabets the a b c d will be get converted to a particular object code that is the codes which can be understood by our machine so it will accept it and it will converts and then it will gives to a uh, operating system so that which will understand the machine can understand those languages isn't it the same way same way as our operating system where is a special program which is called shell in our unix operating system the shell is the one program which provides the interface between the user and an operating uh, uh, user and the operating system so you can see the shell will accept all the instructions or the commands in english your shell will accept the linux shell is there so it will accept all the commands or the shell scripts in the english like language and that will translates into a converted to binary language by shell so it will translate into a computer's native language native language means what which is a binary level language so that will be converted and that is given to our kernel so now linux kernel will understand your request so when it understands it request then it can respond to your request isn't it so shell is nothing but which will helps you in all these functionalities when the user logs into the operating system your shell will start isn't it so uh, the shell for a user will just given out when kernel controls all essential computer operations this kernel will just controls all the essential which is important for your computer operations and it provides the restrictions you can't touch the hardware devices as you want it will have as a particular restrictions also it provides some restrictions in order to access your hardware which coordinates all your executing utilities and also this will manages your resources between the process using this kernel you are only one user can access utilities which is provided by your operating system if this operating system is provided that utility then you can use it not you can use by your own choice so to do anything in the system if you want to do anything in the system then it is like a, a command requires a utility so 
your command your command needs a utility so if at all if it ut it needs a utility means it will once again ask the shell to request the kernel okay so any command which it want to get execute means definitely it needs some files which is relevant to it so that command will ask your shell and that is given to the kernel so kernel executes the utility if the command requires an application program if it requires application program so the shell will request the kernel in order to run that application program okay so this is the procedure of running with the shell so there are two major parts to the shell which is interpreter and programming capability so the shell has a two major part interpreter means what it had a capability to read your commands and work with the kernel to execute them one is to take the command directly on your terminal it will takes the commands and it will starts to execute and it will gives you the output so the another one is called as the programming capability that is the one which allows you uh, to just write the shell script uh, to write the shell script on it okay so you have a scripting language where you will take one editor either it is vi editor or your text editor where you will uh, write your script and it you, you will save it by using a dot sh and then you can run that one so the two capabilities has been given by your by your shell okay so shell is actually broadly classified into two categories one is the command line shell the another one is a graphical shell so command line shell means what so as we all know like shell uh, like command prompt is there in our windows isn't it so in windows if you open the command prompt the same way we have a command line interface in our uh, unix operating system also and here we call that as a terminal so that's what shell can be accessed by a user using a command line interface where a special program which is called terminal in unix or command prompt in a windows so here you pro, uh, that will provide a space in order to type the human readable commands such as cat ls or mkdir like that commands and then that will be allowed you to execute okay that will be allowed to execute it so the result is then displayed on the terminal so uh, the result will be then and there only it will be displayed so this is the fashion if the prompt is coming means if you have typed the command ls minus l so your output will be over here itself you can see the output and once again it will prompt you the prompt so this is your command line shell where you will have a black and white without any user interactions you can't uh, touch or something else you can't uh, do any actions on this you can only type the commands okay so next type is your graphical shell so what is this graphical shell this shells provide means of manipulating programs based on the graphical user interface which is allowing for the operation such as like opening closing moving saving resizing windows or switching from one window to an another or you are using tab for moving from one to an another windows so whatever like all this drag drop clicking options and all everything is given out by your graphical user interface so windows operating system or ubuntu operating system can be considered as a good example which provides gui to the user for interacting with the program so here you need not to type any command for any actions so one day thing is you have to click double click or drag drop or you want means then you can type for a file name that's it so uh, very few typing will be there in this type of user interface okay this is the like how it will look this is our actual unique okay uh, that gui which is showing that to select the directories we are in home desktop gfg under that docs we have selected okay okay coming on to the types of shell so here you can see there are many like you can see there are so many types over here 
but majorly we will classify our unique shells into two that is bone shell and sea shell so here you can see bone shell and sea shell so here the bone shell if you are using a bone shell means the default prompt will be your dollar symbol okay so if at all if you are using c shell means if you are using c shell then dollar, uh, the default prompt will be percentage okay there are various way, various of categories of your bone that is you can say uh, advanced versions of your bone like sh bone shell ksh that is corn shell this is bash that is bone again shell so bash shell this is what we are using bash shell so okay posex shell that is once again it takes for a sh okay and also the different type of shells which is c shell that is c uh, csh okay and once again tc sh that is 10x or top c shell we will say okay so the bone shell the bone shell which has been developed by steve bone at the atn tables it is the oldest because it's most oldest why because we are telling it's most primitive and most of the systems are not working today so it is not used and enhanced of this bone shell that is the common version which we are using is the bash shell so here you can see the c shell was developed in a berkeley bill joy who has received its name for the fact that it commands were support supposed to look like c statements he was just admitted that its statements will look like a c statements so for that a compatible version for your c shell so here that is why it is called as a tc sh okay so the corn shell this is the major like uh, the other than bash we will use a corn shell which has been developed by david corn also and uh, of the atnt bells okay the newest uh, the newest and most powerful shell it is and because it was developed at atnt labs it is compatible with your bone shell so why because this is also developed in atnt labs isn't it the bone family comprising the bone shell will have its own derivatives like slash bin uh, slash sh and the corn shell will have it is like slash bin slash ksh up to like like uh, the folders which has been created or the path where you are going to save it all the things that will be done in that uh, path so bash will be in bin bash and csh will be in bin slash csh and derivatives like tcsh will be bin slash tcsh okay then what is this prompt we keep on telling like prompt 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 that will gives you the prompt like dollar symbol yes of course it is a dollar symbol which is also called as a command prompt which is issued in the shell while this prompt is uh, displayed means you can easily type a command on your terminal so on the terminal you will get a dollar symbol then only if at all if the dollar symbol is viewed then only you can type your command and what do you mean by this shell script the scripting it's nothing but shell script is a file which contains a shell commands the commands which you talked about in previous sessions so those commands are all uh, to uh, taken over here in order to perform some function we can program it in order to perform some a useful function and it is also known as a shell program so now we will come on to our shell's interruptive cycle exactly how our shell is working so when you log on to your unix machine you can see a prompt over there as i told you in the previous slide you can see this dollar symbol which is a prompt this prompt will retains until there until and unless you key something into it okay so whenever even though it may appear like uh, the system is idle if you feel like it is very idle and then also your unix command will be keep on running at the terminal but this command is very special it is with you all the time and never terminates unless you log out so this command is like uh, until and unless you terminate it until that it will be keep on running so even though the shell appears to be idle 
So here Unix command will be running at the terminal. Just type ps command in order to check it. Even like uh, if, if at all if you feel like uh, how to check those uh, whether uh, it is running or not means just type this ps command on prompt so that dollar ps if you give it you can see this bash which is starts to run which has already started and at a terminal pts bar 2 which has a pid number 328 bash shell is running okay so the bash shell is running at the terminal in the device where it will be it is dev slash pts bar 2 so that is the where our file will be there so when you key in a command it goes as input to the shell so when you start to give something into it so it will give uh, into the shell so the shell first scans the command line for meta characters what this shell will do first and foremost it will scan for the command line for a particular meta characters if these are the special characters then mean nothing to the command but mean something special to the shell so if you have that some meta characters on your command means actually it never matters it is nothing to your command which has been given but in fact it has a special meaning to the shell to understand shell knows that the special meaning of that particular uh, meta characters okay so what does this shell will do as soon as it sees with the meta characters, it will take and it performs all the actions which is represented by that symbol before the command can get executed. Okay. So, first when you give, for example, if you give cat greater than foo means this greater than knows that to create a file. So, automatically it will uh, take all the actions or the responsibilities to create a file and then it will execute the command. For instance, the star, see here the star which makes no sense for this command rm but still this shell is replaces it with all file names in the current directory so what they will do rm will ultimately runs with these file names as a arguments okay same way the greater than as i told you so here when all uh, when all this process pre-processing is completing then you can see the following activities are performed by the shells interruptive cycle so first you can see the shell issues the prompt whatever we said or we discussed in the previous slide we are just summarizing it in a statement see here the shell issues the prompt of course it gave a dollar symbol and waits for waiting for your command so after the command is entered the shell will scan for the command line and it will check whether you have given the some meta characters and there are some expands abbreviations like the star in rm and star to recreate a simplified command line it then passes on the command line to the kernel for execution so it uh, once again it passes on the command line to the kernel for execution so the shell waits for the command to complete so command should get complete until and unless the shell won't terminate so it will keeps on waiting for the command in order to complete and normally can't do any work while command is running of course when you have typed the command and if it is executing if it is running means until and unless the command prompt is visible on the terminal you can't even move to the next command so that is the criteria here after the command execution is complete after the command has run its job and it has finished with it then only your prompt will reappears on the shell and returns to waiting role in order to start the next cycle now you are very free to uh, enter any another command which you want to execute it so this is the cycle which has been given out see what you said here first and foremost it gives you the prompt after that you will enter the cat greater than foo okay in the third step what it will do it will just find out the meta character which has to be executed and then it will cease for the creation until and unless this cat command is running it won't allow you to run the another command okay so that's what we will say when command meta characters uh, finished in they passes the command line to the kernel for the execution until and unless the command is running it won't gives you the complete prompt oh after that as soon as it completes it will rear the prompt will reappears and gives you a chance to enter one more command so this is the 
summarization of our shells interpretive cycle so summing up today's session that is we have seen what is shell and also its types of shells and how these shells are all like uh, made up of and uh, how this uh, shell will offers us how to act on it and also its interpretive cycle we have just seen all this in our session and these are all the references where i have taken the data and refer for your further knowledge okay thank you